the athletic director from Moorhead, who I think is a volleyball coach as well. Um, just all of our programs coming together. And who could leave out Bellarmine? Uh, being champs in their conference, they even brought the, the, the trophy. Um, we are proud of them. This was something where everybody from the start worked together. It was a big win for uh, all of us in, in Frankfurt, but it's a really big win for student athletes here in Kentucky. All right, next, we're going to talk a, a little bit today about uh, providing relief for our families and how we've done a couple different things to, to do it. But this week, uh, I'm announcing that I will be joining other governors to send a letter to leaders in Washington to let them know that we support federal legislation to address rising gas prices by suspending the federal gas tax until the end of the year. As Congress looks to relieve Americans of their financial stress caused by increased gas prices and interna amid international crises and rising inflation, it's clear legislative action is needed. This is the type of action that the U.S. government could absorb. It would be harder on any of the states that have so much work that needs to be done. According to the American Automobile Association, the national average gas price in the United States is $4.17.3, up more than a dollar from 2021. The Gas Prices Relief Act, as introduced in the House and the Senate, would alleviate consumer costs of rising gas prices while protecting the federal government's capacity to make infrastructure investments. It would not also not impact any infrastructure investment currently going on in Kentucky or planned through this budget. But the legislation will help Kentuckians save at the pump, which translates into dollars back into consumers' pockets for groceries, childcare, rent, medicine, and more. And the legislation would also ensure the Highway Trust Fund stays solvent. We know it is possible to invest in infrastructure while also providing immediate relief in times of temporary, but still great difficulty. And this is only one step that we're taking. Uh, the next is, is going to be the, the first piece of legislation uh, that I'm signing into law today. Uh, Representative Santoro, if you'd like to, to join as um, uh, Representative Sal Santoro uh, filed House Bill 6 uh, in this session. Uh, it is aimed at providing direct relief on vehicle property taxes at a time when the value of used cars is soaring making people's property uh, bill go up. Uh, I was able to sign an executive order to get a head start on freezing uh, the values uh, that people are paying off of to last year's values, but this codifies it. A uh, step that Representative Santoro started even before we signed that executive order. It means no one will pay more this year than they did last year. Uh, it ensures that people are gonna get a little bit of relief, more than $300 million going back to Kentucky taxpayers, uh, we appreciate this legislation. It's going to help our folks. Thank you. You want to offer anything? Um, this was uh, one of the issues that uh, when we came into session, I was receiving a lot of calls from constituents that they were upset. Uh, usually the value of your car does not rise. It usually you buy it and it stays steady and then drops. So this is really a relief for our families in Kentucky. Um, and I had a lot of support on this, and I'm very glad it is now being signed into law. Let's do it. Right, so wherever you want to be. So not ceremonial. This is the actual bill. Let's make sure it's the actual bill. We have. <laughs> I look you like yours. Yes, it's it. All right, that's it. Short and sweet. And we are 310. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Here we go. Let's take let's take one with the bill itself. All right. Got it. We'll get a file. Thank, Thank you. you for your good work. All right, the next bill we'll be signing into law today was filed by Senator Brandon Storm, Senate Bill 30. Uh, this is a, a good bill that is going to uh, give uh, people more options to make the choice. If you'd like to, to join me, Senator, um, 
to make a monthly donation to the Kentucky Circuit Clerk's Trust for Life, a great program uh, that's been going on for some time. It allows those renewing their motor vehicle registration to express their willingness to be an organ donor, something that saves countless numbers of lives. And it provides that those options will be available both online and in person. Senator. Thank you, Governor. Uh, very briefly, I just wanted to say that this piece of legislation passed unanimous, unanimously in both the House and Senate, and I appreciate the governor signing this today. Thank right. you. All right. Actual bill. That's it. Okay. Still. Congratulations. Thank you. There you go. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And we'll get a file. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, uh, we have Senate Bill 38. Oh, wonderful. It's nice to see you. Senate Bill 38 defines Class A and B felony incest as a violent offense. This will mean those that commit one of the most atrocious, heinous acts possible, one that steals individuals not just childhood, uh, but their trust um, and violates them in ways that most of us could never comprehend. It makes sure that they are going to serve more of their sentences, uh, and it ensures that we're going to be treating what is an awful, awful crime uh, as such. Senator? Thank you, Governor. As the primary co-sponsor of Senate Bill 38, I am thrilled with this passage. I want to thank Senator Julie Rocky Adams for bringing the measure forward and all the people that helped her the governor for signing it today. It sends a loud message that Kentucky will not tolerate heinous crimes and that we have safeguards in place for our victims. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. And, and I was about to walk over, but I've got to thank uh, Senator uh, Denise Harper Angel for her work over the years in everything from addressing our rape kit backlog to helping us make sure we have the best technology to process those kits as quickly as possible for truly standing up for those that have been uh, victimized, and we are much stronger uh, for it because of your work. Thank you, Governor. All right, Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Senator Rocky. Senator Rocky. Love that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And, and the last bill I am signing today um, is a bill uh, authored uh, by Senator Wilson. And, and we added this right at the end. Admittedly, haven't been able to get in touch with him. If he wants to do a ceremonial signing, we will do it. It adds the Bowling Green Chief of Police to the Kentucky Law Enforcement Council. As we wrap up, uh, I would like to thank that chief of police in Bowling Green, as well as all of the first responders there for their incredible efforts in the aftermath of the tornadoes. Uh, they are a credit to their community and to their profession. Speaking of those tornadoes, today marks three months since the deadly tornado outbreak struck Western Kentucky. As of March 8th, 140 individuals from 37 households are now in 38 travel trailers in Graves, 
Hopkins, Muhlenberg, and Ohio counties, all of which now have at least one travel trailer through the Commonwealth Sheltering Program. Tomorrow, I'm going to be back in Western Kentucky and Mayfield to hand over some more keys to these travel trailers. At our parks, impacted families continue to transition to medium-term housing, such as travel trailers and cottages, so they can be closer to their communities, closer to their schools, or back to their homes once they are deemed habitable. That's part of uh, all these steps that we have to take as we initially wrap our arms around all these folks, and then we help them get back up to their feet as we take steps towards self-sufficiency. Now, it is not an easy process. Um, uh, certainly, folks go from multiple meals a day, laundry, et cetera, that we're able to take care of in the emergency towards back to that self-sufficiency. Uh, but the process is moving and, and we continue uh, to work with each and every individual and family. Remember, the deadline to apply with FEMA is Monday, March 14th. <coughs> if I'd done that two years ago. To apply for FEMA assistance, visit disasterassistance.gov, use the FEMA mobile app, or call the helpline. This is Monday. So the deadline for applying for FEMA assistance is Monday. Very critical for folks to know. As of today, we've also now mailed $5.8 million in assistance checks to insured renters and homeowners who are affected by the tornadoes. This brings the total amount of aid from the West Team Western Kentucky Relief Tornado Relief Fund to more than $10 million. We've also helped assist families with funeral expenses and help uninsured homeowners and renters by giving assistance on top of what FEMA has provided. Helping our friends and neighbors is what Team Kentucky is all about. Uh, when we asked you to donate to the Western Kentucky Tornado Relief Fund, you exceeded our expectations, and that fund is here for the long haul. As others move out, having provided emergency help, it moves in. But unfortunately, more bad weather is expected. This weekend, we expect to see three to six inches of snow Friday night and Saturday morning. Higher snow accumulations are likely east of I-65 with the heaviest snow east of I-75. Very cold temperatures are likely to follow. The winter storm watches for portions of central and East Central Kentucky, and a winter weather advisory may be needed in additional Kentucky counties. Uh, to take So take time to prepare, uh, to be prepared to be safe and warm. Thanks. I'll take the water. Thank you. Speaking of help and helping uh, our people, this week I was pleased to be back in Lexington and Louisville with Mayor Gorton and Fisher to provide to those cities some additional help for eviction and utility relief programs. These are important programs that are helping protect people who continue to be impacted by this one in every hundred year pandemic. And after two years since the first recorded case in Kentucky, we continue to lift these families up in prayer who have suffered uh, a loss, either an individual or facing difficulty. And while our cases and our hospitalizations are on a steep decline, uh, with many of the areas in the state even getting to a green zone in the next week or two, we know the lasting impacts of the pandemic are still with us. Um, while our economy continues to improve, Site Selection Magazine ranking us atop of the South Central region for economic development and number three in the entire country when you look at per capita economic development, even with Kentucky's annual unemployment rate decreasing even more, now down to 4.7%, lower than the national average and down from 6.4% uh, a year ago, even uh, with bond rating agencies now moving their economic outlook from stable to positive for the first time in 15 years, there are some whose basic needs are still having trouble meeting because of the impacts of this pandemic. So this eviction uh, relief is going to provide between those two cities more than $30 million of extra help. Um, speaking of those two cities, both of them uh, were recently ranked as some of the best in the entire country at getting those dollars out, with Louisville being ranked uh, number one 
overall, uh, and Lexington being honored as well as the Kentucky Housing Corporation. Other ways we're trying to provide relief include the uh, vehicle property tax freeze we just signed, includes that letter to the federal government on the federal gas tax, and it continues to be my push to temporary, temporarily lower the state sales tax from 6 to 5% for the next year. It's the only way that people in every income bracket get a little bit of help. And it's the only plan out there that helped the people that are struggling the most. Those that struggle the most to pay their bills don't end up paying income tax because they don't make enough. They're not helped in any plan other than the sales tax reduction plan. And the idea of doing some major tax overhaul in the midst of historic inflation and a Russian invasion of Crimea, I'm sorry, the Russian invasion of Ukraine is not the right time and is not going to give us the best product. A temporary sales tax reduction helps people afford more things, helps our small business be able to sell more things, helps our restaurants be more affordable in these times. We've also launched, uh, in addition to the Healthy at Home Eviction Relief Fund, a new fund uh, for those that own their home. That is the Team Kentucky Homeowner Assistance Fund, where people can get up to $35,000 of help if they're behind on their mortgage, uh, insurance payments, uh, homeowners fees, and other expenses. So that you can go to teamkyhaf.ky.gov. I do want to thank um, everybody who has helped with any of these funds. Uh, we have done it better than just about anyone else in the country, and we've been recognized by it. National Low Income Housing Coalition named Kentucky a champion of innovation for its federal rent and utility assistance program. That's pretty neat. That's a national group saying we've done better helping our people with these funds that are available than just about anybody else. Uh, that ought to make us uh, really proud. Uh, that's being there for the lost, the lonely, the left behind, and in difficult times. And I want to thank everybody from the state to the cities that have, that have uh, uh, processed these payments and helped so many. Today, I also want to highlight an event happening in Lexington next week where Kentuckians are coming together to ensure our state's signature bourbon and spirits industry not only remains strong, but continues to soar well into the future. The third annual James B. Beam Institute Industry Conference will be held March 14th through the 16th at the University of Kentucky. This is an event that brings together scientists, farmers, representatives, and staff from local and regional distilleries, secondary industries and tourism to share their thoughts and insights and to collaborate to ensure that this industry continues to thrive. We're talking about an industry that supports 22,000 Kentuckians and is responsible for nearly $9 billion in economic impact and is expanding all the time. The James B. Beam Institute for Kentucky Spirits housed at the University of Kentucky is the bourbon industry's research and development vehicle. Uh, we are excited. Uh, for this conference. Um, our Cabinet for Economic Development is sponsoring one of the panels uh, on sustainability moderated by the Energy and Environment Cabinet on the afternoon of March the 15th. I look forward to attending the conference on Monday, and we look forward to an ever-expanding bourbon industry. So we also have a little bit of sad news today. Um, and I was asked, rightfully so, uh, to pay tribute. Um, last night, uh, Shepherdsville Police K-9 was shot and killed in the line of, of duty. Shepherdsville K-9 Officer Dash was assisting Lebanon Junction Police in pursuit of a shoplifting suspect when the suspect fired on officers striking and killing Dash. I know this is a devastating loss for the department and the entire community. Dash, a Belgian uh, uh, Malinois, was a beloved member of the police force doing exactly what he was trained to do. Uh, our hearts go out to this handler and all the colleagues that he left behind. And finally, our team, Kentucky All-Stars, we are going back to how we started this thing. This was an exciting week in the Commonwealth with universities and student athletes from across Kentucky joining me as I signed legislation for name, image, and likeness compensation. So today, we're celebrating their success, the success our teams have achieved thus far this March and highlighting the student athletes who made it possible. 
So a whole slew of All-Stars. First, Ryan Howard and the entire Kentucky women's basketball team ending a 40-year title drought. UK last won the SEC tournament in 1982, beating the number one team in the country to secure this win. You know, it was just about the last year that we did that ring ceremony uh, officially um, as part of state government and with that 1982 team. So I told Coach Elsie that we're going to do the ring ceremony uh, this week or tomorrow. As quickly as we can, uh, we will schedule it here soon to make sure that there are many more tournament wins to come. The Cats won 10 straight games to earn their spot in this tournament. We are so proud of them. Howard's a leader on and off the court, teaching us all the importance of working together. I was inspired by her words, and she showed up to represent all our athletes out there. I'm excited that she is one of our Team Kentucky All-Stars. But I also want to give a shout out to some other teams because we're seeing postseason success across the state. Let's start with the Bellarmine's men's basketball team. They won the uh, ASUN, the ASUN tournament title. They're playing in just their second year as a Division I program. So this is even more memorable. And the NCAA is so scared of them and how good this team is that they are not allowed to play in this year's tournament. Um, I've been told they might not be uh, eligible for the NIT either. Listen, they're champions, and we ought to celebrate them. Um, great coach. My, my son went to his basketball camp. Uh, wonderful people, wonderful program. I am so proud of everything they have done, and if they aren't eligible to go on to another tournament, they have ended the season as champions, and no one, can knock them off. This week, we also saw the Murray State Racers earn a spot in this year's NCAA tournament while making history as 18-time OVC champs. They beat Moorhead State, which crushed Rocky Atkins, in the Ohio Valley Conference Tournament Final on Saturday. I want to say good job to Moorhead. They were number two in this conference. These were both incredible teams. It was a close game. Um, I hope they both make the tournament. Um, but I know Murray will be a dangerous team representing us well. Uh, and Moorhead, if they make it as well, will show uh, exactly why they belong. Western Kentucky men start Conference USA tournament play tonight, while the Louisville men's basketball team ended its season in a one-point loss last night. And Northern Kentucky wasn't able to make it back to the tournament following a, I think it was a one-point loss on Tuesday night in the Horizon Tournament final. Uh, Coach Horn and that entire team made us proud. They've been really good, especially since they made um, the, the conference and uh, jump uh, not too long ago. The Louisville women's basketball team. It was great having Coach Walls here. Um, they are projected to be uh, among the top seeds of the NCAA tournament, which means we think we can get one of their games in the Yum Center. I hope there will be a big, huge turnout to root them on. And the Kentucky men's basketball team is set to start the SEC tournament play tomorrow night in Tampa. Coach Cal was here yesterday. He's got his watch back, so we must be on a good path there towards victory. On top of that, Oscar Sheway earned the Sporting News National Player of the Year. He has done it with effort and with class. We are really proud that he is um, a current Kentuckian. Uh, we hope to keep him here longer or get him back whenever uh, professional playing days are done. I also want to give a special shout out to the Transylvania women's basketball team. The team is currently 26 and 0. That's really impressive. And playing in the Division Three Sweet 16 tomorrow. A number of our uh, teams from all levels are having success. Congrats to my high school alma mater, Henry Clay, going to the Sweet 16 as well. I want to congratulate all the student athletes, coaches, and staff. And now that we just named everyone a Team Kentucky uh, All-Star, we'll open it up to questions. Um, we've got uh, uh, two of our journalists here and about four on the line. So, Debbie, we'll start with you. Well, the questions are on various abortion bills going through the, the state legislature. We just signed a piece of legislation here today um, making incest a violent crime, and it is. Um, rape and 
incest are crimes that as attorney general, we prosecuted human, human traffickers, we prosecuted, but not just that, we work to provide healing and to lift up those victims. Those are heinous crimes that cause so much harm internally and externally to people. And any bill, any bill ought to provide victims of rape and incest options. After everything those individuals have been through, they deserve options. Karen? Governor, you talked about some of the uh, specific programs that you would like to see or bills that you would like to see passed to help people, especially with rising costs. Mm -hmm. Very much things targeted towards the gasoline prices, car taxes. But the reality is, as we're all seeing, it's not just affecting us at the pump anymore, it's now food and mm -hmm. every item you want to buy. Are there any specific programs or things that you can do quickly that you would like to do now to help people in, in those categories? Uh, the, the question's on, on rising prices, and, and you're right, we see it. Um, across our economy. We see it based on temporary inflation from supply chain impacts from COVID. We will work through those. And now we see it uh, based on Russia invading Ukraine, uh, murdering innocent citizens in the streets and taking the steps that we should as a country in sanctions towards Russia to stop this dictator. We have to stop him right here and right now that takes sacrifice. This time, it's not a sacrifice of our sons and daughters on a battlefield. It is going to be pushing through uh, a harder temporary economic time. Uh, certainly, we, we have uh, done several things uh, from freezing the motor vehicle tax, which is going to save Kentuckians about $300 million. But that decrease in the sales tax, temporary decrease that Angie Hatton has filed together, with the motor vehicle tax that saved Kentuckians about $1.2 billion. Now we know a dollar is fungible, right? If it costs you less to buy one thing you need, you have a little bit more to buy that next thing you need. But again, this is the only thing that's out there that actually addresses what things cost and helps those that are, are struggling the most. So I hope they will very strongly look at that. And then we'll look at other options that are out there. Uh, the federal gas tax uh, would be a huge step uh, that again, the federal government could absorb for a specific period of time. We're asking them right now for what, about uh, eight months? Uh, and one that would, would help people both at the pump, but free up dollars for, for everything else. Uh, Tom Latek. Thank you, Governor, and good afternoon to you. You were uh, just talking about uh, three months since the uh, tornadoes in Western Kentucky. Do you have any figures on the number of Kentuckians who have been helped either through the, the Team Kentucky, Western Kentucky Fund or through FEMA? Uh, so I do not have the numbers directly in front of me on, uh, on FEMA, but uh, we have helped 6,269 Kentuckians uh, through the Team Western Kentucky Tornado Relief Fund. That's helping 80 families with funeral payments. 475 um, uninsured uh, homeowners, 771 uh, uninsured renters, and 4,943 insured homeowners and renters uh, with deductible help. That's about $10 million. Again, that's immediate help. What we're really looking for now is, is a way that we can leverage these dollars on the rebuilding side. Uh, we don't want people strapped with large mortgages to rebuild the home that they were living in, that they may have owned either outright uh, or uh, didn't owe nearly as much on it. Uh, Al Cross. We lose out. Thank you, Governor. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, the pandemic, uh, while it is still receding, seems to have uh, slowed in its uh, recession in the state. Uh, we're still in the top 10 in the number of cases. And uh, one statistic that we haven't looked at very often is uh, deaths uh, per capita. Uh, we are now eighth in the country uh, uh, in, uh, I guess, the last 14 days in reported deaths. And over uh, all time, our rate is 317 per 100,000, and the national rate is 290 per 100,000. Um, 
what do you attribute uh, the uh, the more recent uh, uh, high rate to, and uh, the fact that we're above the uh, national average all time? Al, I think there's a very clear line that you can draw and how this pandemic was handled and our cases and our loss of life. Uh, if you uh, just draw the line where the legislature removed authority from the executive branch to take the emergency steps necessary, we've lost almost double the number of people per month that the legislature has been in charge than when um, I and the executive branch was able to make tough and unpopular decisions. Uh, you look at cases in virtually every other metric and it got twice as bad. Uh, certainly my hope is that we are moving out of this because again, it seems that uh, the difficulty in making tough decisions is a lot harder when it rests on the legislature and a hundred plus people, uh, each one uh, facing different pressures or, or maybe uh, listening too much to, to Facebook. Um, but certainly uh, I think that when you truly sit down and, and analyze the numbers, uh, we were doing better or or at the very least in the middle of the pack uh, in the country, which given our, our the health of our people uh, beforehand, uh, I think was an incredible accomplishment. Um, Gil McClanahan. Good afternoon, Governor. How are you? Good. Um, I've got a uh, two-part uh, question having to do with the state budget that is going through the General Assembly. I know it's not, uh, you know, it's not done yet. It's still in the process. But part one of the budget that you have seen so far, what do you like in it? What do you not like in it? And part two is, do you think Republicans dropped the ball and not investing enough in the state um, because we have because the state of Kentucky has all these surpluses? Tell me that second part, Gil, you were fading. Uh, did Republicans drop the ball um, in not investing enough in the state when we have uh, these record surpluses? Yeah, got it. Uh, so first, I'm just now looking through the Senate version, uh, which, which includes more of our initiatives, admittedly, than the uh, House version, which was actually uh, introduced before the executive branch um, uh, came forward with a draft executive branch budget. Uh, I do appreciate the Senate uh, looking at uh, our, our submitted budget and actually Senate leadership met with us through a number of days and, and that's appreciated. Things I like in it, uh, raises for state workers. Um, it's a, a real good start uh, and I, I'd like to see something already in the second year as opposed to the way uh, they go about it, but there are good state raises there. Uh, I think that there are attempts, uh, while, while I want to be able to discuss with leaders what I think would be most effective in shoring up uh, nursing and nurses in, in Kentucky, uh, there are attempts and dollars placed on it. It's just they really need to be focused on retention uh, here in Kentucky, I believe student loan forgiveness is one of the best ways to do that. And that also benefits all of our in-state institutions, private and public. So in many ways that helps us uh, build our training grounds uh, while at the same time keeping our, our nurses uh, within the, the state. Uh, raises for state police, I believe, are the same level in ours and uh, the, uh, the houses version. Uh, there is an increase in in SEEK funding, public school funding. I don't think it's nearly enough, but there is an increase. Uh, transportation SEEK funding, uh, again, not not nearly enough, not, not close to 100%, but more certainly uh, than last year. There are no required raises for educators, and that's wrong. Schools uh, need that to stay competitive. Our teachers and everyone else who works in those buildings uh, more than deserves, especially with more money coming uh, to our school system to have, uh, at least we propose, a required minimum 5% raise in addition to uh, any other uh, salary or compensation package uh, that they have. Uh, but yes, I do not believe, oh, the Senate budget also has more debt despite having record revenue than I think ever before uh, in a budget. It's got about a billion dollars more debt, more than a billion dollars more in debt between university bonds and, 
and and the state bonds than the budget that we proposed. I mean, it is a significant amount of debt, especially at a time when we have uh, dollars that we can use instead of taking on uh, that indebtedness. So I, I don't believe that uh, it is as responsible as the, the budget that we proposed. Uh, and it still doesn't invest uh, the ways that we should. You know, universal pre-K is just 9%. It costs 9% of the additional recurring revenue that we have in this budget compared to the last. So it's just 9%. Every Kentucky child can be kindergarten ready. Uh, every, uh, the, the workforce, you want to talk about effectively getting people back into the workforce, don't use a stick and just, I mean, uh, all, all destroy a safety net that is critically important and that the steps that, that they're looking at taking will depopulate parts of eastern and western Kentucky. Uh, how about we lift people up? You know, when they instituted pre-K in Washington, D.C., they got 10 percent added to their workforce uh, in just a brief period of time. You know, uh, when you look at the carrot versus the stick, carrots are food that builds you up and makes you stronger. And a stick is something that beats you down. Do we want to build up and strengthen our workforce or do we want to beat our people down? There are ways to do this that are effective and, and we need to be investing in our people in education and a site development fund. We, we spent a lot of money making Glendale uh, a great home that Ford saw. Uh, and came in and, and announced the biggest economic development project in our, our history. Um, we don't have the fund we requested in the Senate budget to make those same investments all over Kentucky. Everybody, every region deserves a chance to get their version of, of that Ford deal. Uh, I want to go back to one thing, though. Senate budget does have dollars for senior meals uh, to ensure that we continue at the level we were in the pandemic and that our seniors uh, do not go hungry. That's a, a that's an important one. That's living out our faith and our, our values. So um, I know the conversations will still be ongoing. Um, and, and I think I've thrown out things I both like and I don't like in a very quick analysis. But they did they did sit down and, and, and talk with us. And that is appreciated. All right. Last one. Ashley Kirkland. Give it just one. Hi, Governor. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, sorry about that. As I'm curious, with this pandemic, as we move from pandemic phase to endemic, what kind of preparations is the state making on reporting cases? So we hope we're moving from pandemic to endemic. That's what we all hope is happening. But we had hoped that we were doing that, too, when Delta was receding. And here comes Omicron. I think it's just important uh, that we stay humble. This is a one in every hundred year virus. It is not an easy adversary to defeat. Certainly in the past, the, the, the time that the, that the pandemic hit folks was longer, but they didn't have vaccines the way that we do or treatments the way uh, that, that we do. So I am thrilled at the direction uh, that COVID is going, getting better uh, every day, but but still, we ought to be wary uh, and, and ought to take the steps to ensure we can make it endemic. Listen, if we really want this to be endemic, everybody needs to get vaccinated and everybody needs to get boosted. Uh, that is a way that we get closer and closer and closer. Um, we need folks to take it seriously and, and just make good decisions throughout their day, the, the best decisions uh, that they can. Uh, we're going to continue to to monitor and to track uh, COVID, uh, we're going to stay on top of it and, and we'll consider changing what is now a weekly reporting uh, as is required based on, on what we face. You know, I'm proud of where we've come, a virus that the world had never seen, that there were no tests for, uh, to having the largest, most flexible and fluid testing network, I think, in, in human history. And we had to set that up on our own beginning in the state when we we found a partner and remember Gravity Diagnostics, small company that, that thankfully, along with a lot of others came to our aid and we built out our own capacity uh, right here in Kentucky. Same thing on, on vaccinations, starting with uh, the, the large vaccination centers with amazing partners, our universities and others uh, coming to our aid, getting people vaccinated and now uh, having uh, 
the most successful vaccination program in roughly a year in human history. It's just this thing's so contagious. We know we need to do uh, even more. And PPE. I mean, we were just like now when we look at uh, being reliant on things overseas and what they can do to our national security, not having enough PPE for um, for healthcare heroes walking into a COVID wing. Now, uh, all of us can find a multiple uh, uh, masks that are of the highest quality that protect us when we choose to, to wear them. So I pray we're moving from pandemic to endemic, but we got to be strong enough and ready for whatever it throws at us. All right, that is this week's update. We're going to be back on Monday for a COVID update. If things continue to decline after Monday,